It is uh, Sunday the 13th of August uh, 2017. I'm in front of the Unitarian Church of Montreal and I'm engaged in my alternative spiritual practice of protesting against Unitarian Universalist uh, injustices, abuses and hypocrisy. And it looks like there's some kind of medical emergency. A block away. Oh, this uh, woman uh, smacked my picket sign even though it wasn't in the bike path. Um, it was close to the bike path, but it wasn't in it. So this woman just, uh, maybe she doesn't like my picket sign that says Unitarian Universal Slander Libel Suck You Asterisk You. But it absolutely was not in her path. Um, so anyhow, um, I didn't catch what she said, but, uh, but uh, while the picket sign edge was close to the edge of the sidewalk, it was not over the edge of the sidewalk and in any way obstructing her path on the bike path. Um, but she nonetheless thought it'd be a good idea to smack the picket sign and express her disapproval. Hello, what's that? For me? I'll take a look, thank you very much. So I just got a letter from a young girl. Um, not sure what it is, well, a letter or card or something. We'll take a look at it. Um, there have been occasions in the past where, you know, Montreal Unitarians have made, uh, you know, nice gestures, you know, give me a flower, or offer a coffee or something like that. Um, and I really don't know but this, this could have just been totally spontaneous on the part of the girl. Uh, it could have been something that, uh, that uh, maybe her parents uh, put her up to. I don't know. I'll, I'll take a look at what it says. It might just be, you know, just a nice little thing that she decided to give to me and had nothing to do with, you know, the reasons for this protest or anything. Um, but nonetheless, uh, somebody's uh, flinging her hair around in the sun. Um, so, uh, I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> she was, uh, doing the sort of the headbanger thing. But in any case, uh, um, you know, getting back to things, you know, I've had some people do little nice gestures. Now, th this is a very young girl, you know. Normally, I, you know, in the other occasions, it's, it's basically been adults. It's been, you know, uh, People like Curtis Murphy, uh, who, by the way, is apparently on his way to being a Unitarian Universalist minister if he isn't already one. Uh, but he's certainly in the pipeline to become a Unitarian Universalist minister. I believe he gave me a, a flower at one point. Um, and then, uh, I'm trying to remember her name, um, girl who left the church uh, some years ago. Uh, uh, Amber Dawn, Amber Dawn Belmar, I think it is. Um, you know, same kind of thing, you know, she, I think, offered me a flower or something like that. Um, you know, little gesture, nice little gesture. Well, that, you know, that's fine. Nothing wrong with nice little gestures, but nice little gestures do not solve the very serious problems that I'm dealing with and that indeed various other people are are dealing with. Um, so as much as I appreciate the occasional nice little gesture, certainly beats being physically assaulted by Montreal Unitarians or having my picket signs stolen by Montreal Unitarians, etc. Having false criminal charges brought against me by Montreal Unitarians, which has in fact happened. Um, uh, you know, these nice little gestures are, are nice, but they do not in any way resolve the conflict, which needs to be resolved through justice, equity, and compassion in human relations, not to mention a free and uh, genuinely responsible search for the uh, truth and meaning of uh, this protest. <clears throat> so it looks like a guy just made a shortcut through the church grounds rather than walking on the sidewalk. A look at things. And we'll just continue to circulate. I'll take a look at that little card or whatever it is uh, soon. I might even pull it out uh, you know, before this protest is over. Could be interesting. Um, so... <clears throat> 
Anywho, I'll just continue to circulate here as I'm uh, supposed to do. And yeah, this thing's starting to come up loose. Let's have a look here. See what it is. Your life is hard. Ha ha ha! Oh really? Who would have thought my life is hard? No, actually, uh, I'm not saying <laughs> there's certain parts of my life that aren't a little hard, uh, but I can assure that little girl. Um, and uh, indeed, uh, her father and members of the Unitarian Church of Montreal that I actually uh, quite enjoy this little protest outside the Unitarian Church of Montreal. It's not hard at all. Uh, being falsely accused of blasphemous libel in 21st century by immoral and unethical and borderline criminal and quite frankly batshit crazy UUA leaders like Reverend Dr. Peter Morales and uh, Kathleen K. Montgomery <laughs> wasn't hard at all. I burst out laughing when I read that uh, cease and desist demand letter. I just thought it was hilarious and total bullshit of course and I, I'm right about the total bullshit part. I'm right about the hilarious part. You know on the one hand it is hilarious that atheist Unitarians are falsely accusing me of uh, blasphemy in the 21st century, uh, but on the other hand it's not hilarious, indeed it's quite despicable if I can borrow a word from uh, the UUA's Canadian attorney, uh, for the UUA to accuse me of blasphemous, blasphemous libel in an effort to conceal such despicable crimes as pedophilia and rape committed by certain Unitarian Universalist ministers. Um, so anyhow, um, so that is an interesting little message, you know, your life is hard. <laughs> um, and no, no, I, it's, my life is pretty damn easy compared to a whole lot of other lives, I can tell you that. Um, and we, as I said, you know, everyone has a certain amount of, you know, hard times as it were. Uh, but I, I can assure people that, uh, that uh, while there are certain aspects of my life that could be described as being hard, that my life as a whole is not hard and there's a heck of a lot more good times than bad times. Um, and uh, at least insofar as this uh, protest outside the Unitarian Church of Montreal goes and at least insofar as my ongoing conflict with the outrageously hypocritical Unitarian Universalist Church, in quotation marks. Um, uh, well, it's actually quite enjoyable, uh, most of it. Very little of it's uh, hard, in the sense of being like difficult and onerous. I mean, yeah, there's, it's kind of onerous that Montreal Unitarians and uh, UUA leaders and, and so on are so stubbornly resistant to practicing what Unitarian Universalism preaches. You know, I'd rather this conflict was settled years ago with some genuine justice, equity, and compassion in human relations, but, but you know, that's, that's the, uh, you know, the fault of the Unitarian Universalists, not me. I mean, I have legitimate reasons to complain, legitimate reasons to protest, and Unitarian Universalists are just incredibly obstinate in their refusal to recognize any wrongdoing and to uh, apologize for the various uh, injustices and abuses and hypocrisies that I'm protesting against and so on. Um, so yeah, on the one hand it's somewhat bothersome that, uh, that this conflict has gone on for so long thanks to Unitarian Universalist hypocrisy and willful ignorance and psychological denial and so on. Um, but, uh, but heck, you know, I've, I've had fun with it. I've gone along for the ride and I'm sure, I'm sure quite a few Unitarians have had a bit of a hard time as a result of their foolish behavior. Can't imagine that uh, the UUA was very happy with how I totally ridiculed their uh, false blasphemous libel accusation, etc. So uh, just gonna pick up the picket signs that got blown down here and uh, make sure they're readable. So anyhow, I got another person going by who's clearly not a uh, 
church member. Wasn't sure, you know, like when people are coming that way, sometimes they go into the church, sometimes they just go up the street. Anyhow, yes, let's one more time. Let's have a look at this. Let's uh, just put it down on, uh, put it down on, uh, we'll put it down on an appropriate picket sign here. So, so here's this picket sign which says, uh, Unitarian Universalist perversion of justice sucks you asterisk you. In other words, it sucks ass. Um, and so yes, you know, having to deal with Unitarian Universalist perversion of justice, which includes, but is by no means limited to, the immoral and unethical and borderline criminal and batshit crazy attempted misuse of Canada's blasphemy law, in UUA clergy sex abuse cover-up and denial legal bullying, which seeks to conceal such despicable crimes as pedophilia and rape committed by certain Unitarian Universalist ministers, if I can borrow a few choice phrases from the cease and desist demand letters that I was served with in 2012. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, there might be a little bit of hardship involved with that, but I'd say more on the end of the uh, foolish Unitarian Universalist who, who made that move. Uh, but let's have a look at this thing. Here's what it says. <clears throat> and again, I don't know if it was you know, specifically intended for me or not. It may not. I mean, your life is hard with a rainbow and a heart. And it looks like sort of a sort of a rainbow and a cloud over the heart. But that, that's what I was given by this little girl. Again, it, it may have nothing to do with my protest might just be some spontaneous thing, you know, she maybe had intended to give this to someone else in the church. Uh, but it could also be some kind of like subtle message that, uh, you know, she was put up to by her father or by the church more generally. But yeah, I'm not as suspicious minded as uh, a whole lot of Unitarian Universalists I know. So I'll consider it to be, you know, just an innocent thing on her part. Uh, but I, you know, I'll tell you one thing about uh, life being hard. My, my life is not as hard as those people who, as children, were sexually abused by Unitarian Universalist ministers. My life is not as hard as the teenage Tibetan refugees who were repeatedly raped by Reverend Mac Wallace Mitchell after he lured them away from their families in India with promises of a better life in America. You know, my life is not as hard as the boy who was adopted by Stephen Craig Bullite, a Unitarian Universalist religious educator in Oregon, who uh, repeatedly sexually abused and even raped, sodomized essentially this young boy, you know, basically who he adopted when he was 11 years old. Um, and eventually this was uh, discovered uh, and uh, Stephen Craig Bullitt was uh, charged, tried and convicted of uh, a variety of crimes related to his uh, you know, sexual abuse of this young boy who he adopted um, and sex abuse of other children as well I should say. Um, uh, you know my life's not as hard uh, I'd say as any victim of serious clergy sexual abuse committed by Unitarian Universalist ministers, uh, especially cases where, you know, virtually no justice has ever been granted by the Unitarian Universalist Association. So no, uh, you know, I'm, I'm uh, thankfully, you know, free from that hardship. Um, you know, it's just uh, truly pathetic how the Unitarian Universalist Association, uh, you know, tries so hard to conceal the truth and, and protect abuse of clergy. I mean, even now there, there are ministers who are credibly accused of sexual assault, and and yet the Unitarian Universalist Association, uh, you know, has done nothing to discipline them. Uh, no criminal charges have been brought against them, and, and so on. This is partly sometimes the fact, you know, it's because the victim themselves doesn't want to bring criminal charges for whatever reason. Um, you know, and, and that's on them as far as I'm concerned. If a victim of clergy sexual abuse, especially serious clergy sex abuse, such as rape or, uh, you know, sexual assault, um, 
you know, if they, for whatever reason, choose not to bring criminal charges against the minister in question, well, you know, that's essentially their choice, and I don't think it's a good one, really, uh, because it basically allows that minister to go on and abuse other people. Um, but, uh, you know, in some cases, you know, in some cases, uh, you know, the Unitarian Universalist religious community, if they know about something like that, you know, they should bring charges, you know. Uh, that's actually what happened in the case of, uh, of the Reverend Mac Wallace Mitchell case. As I understand it, it wasn't his victims who went to the police. It was some church members of one of the two parishes that he presided over, that he ministered to, uh, who, you know, when they were told about the sexual abuse that uh, Reverend Mac Wallace Mitchell was being accused of by these teenage Tibetan refugees, they brought it to the attention of the police. They thought this, this has to be brought to the attention of the proper secular authorities, if I can borrow a term from uh, Reverend Dr. Johnny Burens. Um, and they did that. Uh, and, and then, uh, you know, as a result of doing the right thing and reporting the alleged rapes, which turned out to be actual rapes in that Reverend Mac Wallace Mitchell was, you know, convicted, um, you know, they were ostracized and, and uh, treated abusively by, you know, other members of their congregation. You know, they eventually resigned and, and left uh, their, their congregations. I think one of them is still within the Unitarian Universalist religious community, uh, but, you know, in a different church or whatever, or maybe not in a church at all, you know, maybe she decided to, to you know, remain a Unitarian Universalist, but not necessarily a member of any particular church. But I know of another one who's no longer a Unitarian Universalist, and, you know, both of these people are absolutely not impressed with uh, how they were treated by their fellow Unitarian Universalists when they, you know, reported... Uh,